Welcome back to another episode of the STI Killer Dodge Colt presented by Coyorad. Today we're gonna to reinstall the rear end and make the top side look as good as the underside. If you guys watched the last episode, you'll know that as we started to reassemble the rear end, we came to a screeching halt because we were missing a few things. We didn't realize we didn't have everything back yet from stripping tech, but we do now, including this big piece of the rear subframe. This is actually a, an aluminum piece that uh, JP at Stripping Tech very generously powder coated for us so it'll match everything else and it looks great. So we can get down to business now and really finish installing everything in the rear end, including I think the suspension arms and maybe even the rear hubs, coilovers, rear yes. coilovers, maybe some brakes. Maybe like completely reassemble this rear end and then I think we're gonna drop the car down and give the exterior of it as much love as we gave the underside here. Cause really the underside looks like a new car. So I think we gotta to try to make this exterior look at least, at least as good. I don't know if we can pull it off or not, but we do have some pretty sweet stuff back from paint that we'll show you shortly. There you have it everyone. The rear diff is in place. Everything is bolted down and torqued to spec and it is looking good back here. I gotta say it's- Whew, does it ever. Whew, it's exciting to see parts getting bolted on this car. Speaking of which, you've been busy over at the press pushing out the uh, OE ball joints from the rear control arms. And we are gonna replace those with these high quality uh, OE style ball joints from Hard Race, which we sourced from our friends here at stage4motorsports.com. They are the Canadian distributor for Hard Race, so for all you Canadians looking for the good stuff from Hard Race, check them out. And uh, you were saying that you've sort of developed a, uh, a nice way of removing and, and reinstalling these over at the press, so why don't we jump over there now and CPT's top secret tip. Before we hit the press, we actually got to remove a retaining clip and this rubber boot. So what I'm gonna do here is come in with a hammer, and you can see my little punch just like that to lift that up. Just go all the way around. And now comes the messy part of taking that off. And as you can see here, this is the retaining clip, which I really like the, the design of this. And th this clip holds the ball joint in and it's also press fit, but it's not like crazy press fit like other ones I find. So with this clip in here, you gotta just loosen it up a bit first, get it rotating. And then what I'll do is come in under it. Just like that. And then you gotta, there it goes, bring it up and around. And uh, safety glass is time. Okay. Because these tend to shoot. Oh, the clips do, yeah. yeah. So, Gotta go around, Gotta get it up here. There it goes, oh, that one came off pretty easy. Sweet. Or maybe it didn't, not yet. Okay, this may still shoot. Am I in the danger zone over here? You probably are, there All you right. go, gone. All right. Okay, so I'm actually gonna do the same procedure on this and then we're moving over to the press. I've gone to my bushing removal set and pulled out this cup, which is sized properly, just a little bit bigger so it'll uh, fit underneath the ball joint. As you can see, I got a socket up top here. And now it's just a matter of lining this up, and coming down on it. And then let's see if I gotta make sure it's all lined up. It is, and come on, there she goes. And just like that, one of the simpler jobs that I've done, I think it's because of the aluminum, but check that out. So I had to press this back in, easy peasy, drops in like that. And you go to your press and I've got this, I don't even know what it is, a, a, a large disc here. 
allows it to evenly distribute the weight. So just line it up and just like that. Super easy and we are almost done. Final piece of the puzzle is to put this snap ring in place here and my tool sucks people. I don't have a good snap ring tool. It is very bent, which means it does not like to cooperate, but I still will make use of it. And there you go. So that is in place. Now we take our rubber boot, put it down here, seal it around. So I quickly realized that you just can't push this rubber boot on. It requires a little bit of extra force because I think it's got like a, a nice press fit sleeve in there. So here's my recommendation. Just lay it out like that and put this bushing press over it and then just slowly tap around. As you can see, we're good to go. So it's back to installing these bits. And for the final piece here, some StopTech Sport Rotors. Wow, that was a lot of work. First off, Mitsubishi, what were you thinking putting the gas filler neck in the way of this bolt? <laughs> I had to like literally take this whole piece apart to get this bolt back in. Ugh, nightmare there, but nothing compares to the job of having to put together this parking brake assembly. Like this is the bane of my existence. I, I just don't know why, maybe I, I'm i slow at this or inexperienced, but every time I try to tackle this on the Mitsubishis, it's just, it's not well thought out. So it just requires a lot of cursing and swearing, but eventually it goes together. So there you have it. And if you haven't noticed, we have our KW Club Sports. That's right, the race bread version of their coilover V3s. And man, these are gonna kick some STI ass, aren't they? Ooh, DP? throw one down. I don't know, buddy. I have the exact same setup on the STI. So. You do, you do. And that's why we went with them uh, for a fair match in that sense. But they're, we've run a ton of KW coilovers. We absolutely love them. These are uh, 12 way rebound and 16 way compression. Actually, so you just flip the script on that. 16 rebound, 12 compression. Well, why do I always get it wrong? I'll, I'll turn the knobs for you, PT. Exactly. I'll turn the knobs Dave's for a you. suspension tuning expert, and hopefully he doesn't uh, tune I me the wrong no, way. No, he's no, gonna, he's gonna dial care, me yeah. improperly. But um, yeah, so it's a two-way uh, dampening coilover. Um, the shock body is all stainless steel. So for us, that's a big thing up in these areas where you can have salt. We're not gonna be driving this car in the winter. However, it's still good to have that. It's not gonna rust, like nothing's gonna seize up. And as I said, overall, just such an awesome coilover. We'll get uh, more into these when we install the fronts. Last item on the rear subframe is our Super Pro Sway Bar. And I, I'm upgrading from the factory one because really this one is adjustable. So it's three-way adjustable. I've set it to the hardest setting. I want maximum oversteer on this thing. Uh, it is a 22 mil bar. They do offer a larger 24. I just went with a 22 because I figured that's a, a, a good starting point for us. Here we are getting ready to bleed the AYC and wow, it is a bit of a setup. 
thank you so much to Nicholas Ouellette. He actually sent me this Evolution Hydraulics AYC uh, bleed unit, bleeder system. It's super convenient. Otherwise, uh, there is a way to do it through the factory uh, Evo scan tool, which we don't have and we don't have any wiring. Or there's like a shady way of doing it where you lift the whole car up, you put it into gear, and then you like crack the lines and turn the wheels so the AYC system works. Nevertheless, this is the way to go. So what we've done here is we've actually topped up our, uh, our diff AYC with um, ATF fluid and it has to be a, what, what was it Dave, spec two or spec SP2 three? Or SP2 or SP3, yeah, that's SP3 right. equivalent fluid. And we've got our bleeder on, I think the left side of our AYC right now hooked up here. And what we've done is using the diagram provided here, hooked up into our whole AYC system right here. And then what we're doing is we're gonna prime the pump for three to five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. You hear it kind of slowing down, so you, there's pressure now. And I'm gonna turn AYC on. And then if you watch the line there, it should start coming out. So you can see it's filling up there. And what we're trying to do is just clear all the air out of it. And it's starting to get there. So we're gonna repeat this process over and over for both sides until the whole system is purged. One thing, don't forget to fill up the reservoir because if this thing runs dry, it's back to square one. That AYC system bleed technique actually worked really well. It's, at first it was very intimidating, but once we got to it, it was pretty easy. So I'm pretty confident we've got ourselves a good AYC. And the last, last item to bolt up to the, the bottom here before we move up top is this filler neck guard. And if you guys remember last time, it was covered with dirt inside and, uh, and it was somewhat rotting. Stripping Tech ended up powder coating this, so it's looking pretty awesome. And I'm gonna hit it with some fluid film in here just for the sake of it, just to make sure that we don't have any type of corrosion starting, but I mean, with the way this is right now, it shouldn't. It's not gonna see uh, any type of nasty road use. So we should be good to go. And now it is finally time to move up top. Slow down, PT. Before we jump up top, I know you're anxious to, you know, make this car look pretty and everything. And I gotta say, by the way, it looks amazing under here. It really does. I the color the combo is nice. All blue and shiny and clean. Man, it looks good. In any case, uh, we were noticing under here that why don't, why don't we give it a quick alignment in the back end? Because we've got a bunch of positive camber and some toe out here. So rather than just kind of leaving it like this and you know slapping the rest of the rear suspension on it later or the wheels and tires and brakes on it later, why don't we just give it a quick rough in? So beauty of these hard race arms is release the uh, jam nut here. And then I can use our big gold inch and a quarter wrench on here. And if I turn it, What's this clockwise? I am lengthening this arm, and in the process, I am adding negative camber. So I will just crank this guy out, and you'll see this end coming out, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay. slow and steady. Slow and steady. So once I add enough camber here that this looks, you know, to be kind of in a reasonable plane, I will jump up to the toe arm here. And I've already released these two jam nuts on each end of it. And I just throw a 24 mil wrench on the middle of it. And I give it a turn and that will take toe out. Step one to making the body look like a whole car again is reinstalling the trunk. We had taken that off and the wing off, as you may recall, to get the wing and the top deck of the trunk painted. It had a lot of holes in it because I think the previous owner had mounted up like a, some kind of an aftermarket wing rather than the factory wing. So there was a bunch of holes here that Luca 242 Customs patched up for us. Or did you weld those up, Pete? No, he patched he them patched up. patched those up? Yep. And painted the top of the deck, but not the front face. So as you can see, this front needs a lot of cleanup. The top looks really good. He also painted the wing element here, which used to be a really faded black paint that I think somebody had painted over top of the, the carbon. Yeah, it looks good in one, one color now. It does look good in silver, I like it, yeah. I've also installed the side view mirror on this side. I was gonna call it the driver's side, but no, this is the passenger side on this JDM machine. It was just really badly faded. The clear had failed on it. Looks new again, thank you, Luke. And more than that, we had a huge egg size dent here that you guys may remember. It was really quite deep and nasty. So Pete reached out on Instagram and said, hey, are any of you guys uh, 
local to us are PDR guys, paintless dent removal guys. And it turns out we found somebody who came here and did an amazing job fixing this up. So let's jump to that now. Just down here inspecting Brandon's work from Automedics. He uh, spent, man, the better part of a day really to get yeah. this pulled out. Yeah, it was as, as well as you can. Hours on that for sure. Yeah, Whew, <laughs> it it looks great. Unfortunately, we had the paint sort of come off there. Can you maybe explain to us how that how that works? Well, the the thing is with with the older cars, uh, the the paint just fades. Uh, it, it just uh, it loses its strength and it loses its uh, flexibility over time. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, especially if a car's been sitting out in the sun a lot, uh, you start getting really where the paint is just, uh, it doesn't have that flex anymore. Right. Um, was unfortunate with this, with this scenario. Um, usually when you have a bigger dent, um, I like to use something of the glue pullers and glue a tab just to reduce the volume. Right. So that way I could pick apart with the, with the tools. Um, majority of the tools that you see are really sharp pointed. Right. So to take out a, a big dent with, with a really sharp point, it would be like, kind of pushing it with forever. the back of a pencil in a yeah. sense, right? Yeah. Um, so the whole point is just to reduce the volume. So once we start tooling it, um, we pick apart the little lows. But in this scenario, it was just the... The glue literally just pulled a bit. The, the yes, I, it, was just the, it was just so weathered in this area. I tried uh, buffing it a little bit just to kind of give a little bit of, you know, clean up the surface. Yeah, you can see it looks much better. A little bit shiny. Yeah. <laughs> I was just to clean up the surface, try to add a little bit of moisture with the, with the, with the buffing compound, um, just something for the glue to grab. Uh, uh, not necessarily just burn or burn the paint, but right, right. unfortunately, I, I'm glad that it was just in, in, in a small, a tiny spot, it's a tiny spot. I mean, I'd much rather have to touch up that tiny thing than have to like body fill yes, it and paint yes, the whole door. Yes, so, so this still saves us a ton of time and money. So absolutely, it's, it's well worth doing. And, and typically, the dents you would do would be smaller than these. Is this sort of like the, like the large end of the range? Um, well, I can do bigger stuff as long as it's uh, you know in a sense bowled out. Um, once metal starts to wrinkle like paper, mm -hmm. um, it really becomes difficult to move it around at that point. Uh, whatever you do on one side will have a sort of a direct opposite effect on the other side of the dent as well mm. too. Um, so, but mainly I specialize in sort of your typical parking lot damage. Somebody right. opens a door, door dings. things and dents like that. Um, they are a lot of parts and places on the car where you can't actually access. For instance, uh, you know, about an inch around any kind of area you can't access because the metal's- Double thick. Double thick welded right, together. Right. Um, and in this scenario, because uh, this panel actually comes up to here and then they fold the metal over, which actually ran across about the top portion of the dent. That so much, the right? upper portion uh, was really hard to get at because okay. you can't really access it. Um, but I was, uh, I asked Peter if he could remove the handle for me because we did have to drill a hole from the side of the door. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't get the window open. Um, obviously no power, it's pretty much gutted. Yeah, it's a shell right now. Yeah, so we did need to handle out just so we can access it from this side because the handle mechanism, everything would have been in a way behind the dent and I wouldn't have been able to see the dent with my reflection board being that the handle comes out right. this way, so. Man, but, big job, and it, it turned out great. I mean, just looking down the side of the car, you wouldn't never really know there was a dent there at all, so it's. Well, that's incredible good what you news, can do. Yes. Well, thanks very much for making this look amazing. We'll put a link in the description for everyone who may want to hire you to take care of their own door dings. You service at Burlington, Oakville, Mississauga. Yep. yep. In special cases, he even comes to the hammer. He's slumming <laughs> it with us here today, everyone. So Absolutely. Thanks again for making this thing look new, or at least a whole lot better than it did. With that dent pulled, it is finally time to get on to washing this thing, and it is truly filthy. We have not washed it since it's arrived. Whew. It is disgusting, so it's going to get a big cleanup.
Well, with the old uh, Dodge Colt washed off here, and it looks... If you're going to call it better. anything, you got to call it a Mitsubishi Mirage. A Mirage. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. I apologize. Just diss it that way, okay? You, you Diamond Star guys are picky, eh? Well, uh, well, well, we'll call it the Evo. The Evo is all cleaned up, and it is time to give it a good cut and polish. And for that, we have gone back to our friends at Sonex Canada, who have resupplied us on all the good stuff. We've got all our cleaners over here. We've got our microfiber tiles ready to go. And maybe most importantly, PT went out and spent the big bucks on this Roops or Rupes or Rupees. I don't know how to pronounce <laughs> it. Uh, what's the model on this? It's something 15. It's a uh, LHR 15 yeah. Mark III. For those of you who care. The Mark III, the latest and greatest. The, uh, the beauty of these, and as we discovered when we polished the STI, where we borrowed Sonex's Roops and used our own like consumer grade one. This just has much better control. It's got a variable speed control here and you've got a, a trigger here with like a, a variable speed is there and plus you can lock it down so your hands aren't like constantly pulling a trigger and cramping up on you. It's got like this nice big uh, soft grip on the top. So this is a pro quality polisher. This is what the pros use to, to actually do paint correction. So we've got the right tool, at least the operator is another question, but at least we got the right tool. And as you can see, we've got an assortment of uh, cutting and polishing compounds here. So if we wanted to go say with a more um, aggressive cut, then we would say use something like Cut Max, which you can see has a cutting grade of six, which is the highest and a fairly low gloss grade or a slightly less aggressive would be like this X Cut 0505, which is a five and five. And you can see why the, they use red lettering here. And that's just to tip you off that you use the red pad with it. So the red pad is more abrasive than the yellow. The yellow is more abrasive than the gray. And so as you move down in abrasiveness like this, being a four cut, you go to the, the softer yellow pad. And then for your finish, you go to the softest one. And that gives you that high gloss finish. But we are actually going to cheat a little and use Sonax's cut and finish, which is a one step process where it both cuts and gives you a high gloss finish. So. Uh, as I can recall from what Carson at Sonos Canada was educating me on this, it basically, the way it's formulated is when you st first start working it, it's got quite a high abrasiveness to it, so it does the cutting, but the more you work the product, it starts to break down and actually gives you that high gloss, less abrasive compound. So it is literally a two-in-one compound, and we can also adjust how aggressive we get with the cut and the finish by changing what pad we start with. So we will, they recommend starting with the yellow pad and then we will step down probably to the gray pad for it if we do like a second finishing pass with this. But why don't we just send it with the yellow pad and see what we get PT. So uh, let's throw that on there, load some product on it and get polishing. While Dave gets to polishing and cutting and all that fun stuff, I am gonna take on the dirty job of removing this nasty uh, fender flare trim and as you can see it is so old and brittle this stuff is just gone i've actually ordered new um fender trim here so the trick with uh with this is though it's going to leave a bunch of residue as you can see and some of you in a previous video posted i should pick up this and it has been amazing this is an adhesive remover wheel from 3m i'll make sure to post a link in the description for this but it works amazingly well to remove this stuff, like the glue and whatnot. And it's paint safe. Without exactly ruining, ruining the finish. So as you oh. can see, like, look at that. Wow. It just, yeah, that works look at that. really well. And it well. just takes it off. So it's like Impressive. really awesome. I don't know about you, PT, but I'm tuckered out. That's a lot of work, but also a lot of fun. 
because you get that immediate gratification when you're polishing a car. You just, the difference is immediately visible. As, it, as are these fender flares. Wow, what a difference it makes to have those back on the car. Yeah, and with that trim, like, yeah, ooh, man. Brand new man. welting in there, ooh, so good. You did a nice job on that. And uh, I gotta say, Luke at 242 Customs did a really good job paint matching. That is a very close match, so uh, thank you again, Luke, for that. And thank you, Sonax and Roops, for making a killer machine, because that is, uh, wow, mm. even with that uh, cut and finish, even with that cut and finish, which is just a one pass uh, cut and uh, polish treatment, it turns out remarkably well. Yeah, the car looks so much better. It, it does, it does. I mean, the problem is once you get started and you get up really close, you start seeing little flaws everywhere and you kind of want to go over it again and you want to make it a two or a three stage process. But realistically, for most people, I think this cut and finish process is pretty darn good. So just realized I missed the end plate on the wing here. So in any case, guys, we will touch it up a little bit more, but this gives you an idea of how good the car is gonna look once we've given it the full treatment. Got the flares on, the new wheels and tires, which we'll show you soon. So thank you very much for watching everyone. I think we're calling this one a wrap. And I think I'm pretty happy to be working on this Mirage Evo Protege Colt again. Something about this car is really growing on me. So let us know in the comment section what you think of the progress we're making and we promise we will start building the engine soon. So I quickly leave, so I quickly, you guys saw the, the <clears throat> last episode? Yeah, it was the end of the last yeah. episode, yeah. Yep. If you guys made it to the... <clears throat> wow.